Welcome back to Gabriela Gap Rod. Today we are going to see how to create blood with VFX graph and shader graph. More specifically this burst of blood and this looping effect as well. I'm gonna show you how to create a splash on the ground and the proper shader for the blood. And the cool thing is that you can also create radioactive waste for example. Or something else that you have on your mind. It's an awesome trick. Just wanna say that these videos are possible thanks to my patrons, you can find the project files there, I left a link in the description, and by supporting me you get access to many more assets that you can use in your games. So without further ado, let's jump right into it and let's see how we can create blood. By the way I'm using Unity 2020.3.16 with the Universal Render Pipeline and in the Package Manager. I have installed Visual Effect Graph and Shader Graph, we are going to need both. And it's also important that you go to edit and in preference, in visual effects you turn on experimental operators slash blocks. Alright, so we are going to create something like this, as you can see it's looping and it's a burst as well. Pretty cool, right? We want to start by creating an empty game object in our scene. With right click. Make sure you reset transform. I'm gonna move it around here to this cube which as more or less the same height of a person. And in the folder, I'm going to create a visual effect graph and rename it to VFX graph underscore blood. I'm gonna parent this to the empty we created and reset the transform as well. Great, now we can open VFX graph if we press in this edit button. We can duck this window wherever we want. And if you don't see the particle system, you can press F and it will focus on that. So as you can see, it's currently looping thanks to this constant spawn rate in the spawn. It's constantly spawning 16 particles per second. And we can also, with spacebar, search for a burst. We got this single burst. If we set the count to 16 and disable the constant spawn rate, every time we press play, we get 16 particles. But the cool thing is that we can use both however we want. So we just need to create a boolean in the properties panel, in the blackboard. Call it loop, for example, and make sure it's on basically true since it's a boolean. And now if we drag it around here, we can use an if, which is called a branch in VFX graph. Basically if it's true, then we want to use a rate, a float of 32 particles for example, and connect it to the true and connect it to the constant spawn rate. And if it's false, well, we then want to connect it to the single burst. And we can say now in the inspector if it's looping or a burst. And that's how I created the loop and the burst version of the blood. <laughs> but we need a few more things, of course. <laughs> Let's just take care of the motion of the blood before we take care of the aspect. As you can see, we have a set velocity in the initialized particle and the Y will basically make the blood go up a lot and the X it will make it go to the sides and Z it will make it go forward in this case. Let's create a vector tree so we can have control over these and create as many blood variations as we want. And we can call it blood velocity. Default value of 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and 5. But as you can see we have two options, the A and the B. Let's imagine that the B is the maximum. Let's connect this property there. And for the A, in this case the minimum, we can open these, as you can see we have X, Y and Z. Well for the A we can say that the X since it controls the blood to the sides, the range, we can use the negate node to basically turn the 0 0.5 positive to a negative value. And well, for the y and for the z, we can simply multiply it by a smaller value, like 0 0.2, which means it's 20% of their original value, and connect it to the y and z. And it's cool because now we got control over this easily in the inspector. And we can create as many variations as we want. But as you can see, it's not very realistic. We still need gravity. And it's very simple to use gravity in the update particle. If you press spacebar and search for gravity, we get one. And that's it. If you look closely, it doesn't spawn particles continuously. And that's only happening because we need to increase the capacity to a value like 1000, for example. That's enough. So now that we have most of the motion right, Let's take care of the aspect. If we go down here to the output particle quad, as you can see we have an input for shader graph. And we are going to take advantage of that to create the blood. 
But if you don't see this input right here, you can go to edit and in preference, make sure in visual effects, you turn on experimental operator slash blocks. So let's create the shader with right click in a folder. We can start with a blank shader graph and rename it to blood shader, for example. Double click to open it up. First thing we need is to tell which target we are going to use this for. In our case, it's going to be visual effects. We also want to use alpha clipping. If we want to create procedural blood, if you press space bar, as you can see, we have a procedural drop down menu. We have a few things and the one that we need is noise. The gradient noise is the one that will look better for a blood effect. As you can see, the X controls the scale. It's useful. So let's create a property for that, a float. We can call it blood scale. If you select it now in the graph inspector, this one, we can set the default value, for example, is seven. You can drag and drop it and connect it to the gradient noise, to the scale more specifically. And now, if we connect this to the base color, save this shader in the Save Asset button. If you go back to the VFX graph, we can now assign the shader graph we created. And as you can see, if we get closer to the particles, they are simply squares with a grayscale noise. Nothing more. So let's fix that, let's improve this. As you can see, we have this vector one with a very strange name. You can fix it by naming the reference. What I like to do is copy and paste the name and add an underscore in the front. And that's more than enough. Now, we are also going to need color, of course. So let's create the color property. I'm going to push it up here. Make sure it's HDR in case you want to make it really glow. You can also create poison with these and other type of effects, by the way. And now I'm going to choose a reddish color, something more or less around here. Once you get a nice color, we can, what we can do is multiply this with the gradient noise and now the gradient will be tinted basically and replace the connection to the base color of course. Save the assets. If you play this, this is what we got so far. And the properties have a proper name as well in VFX graph. Cool. So we need a few things, very simple things. First one is if you push this gradient noise back, we can clamp this so we make sure it goes between 0 and 1. 0 is black and 1 is white. We don't want any value below that and above that. Then we can control this with a power node. As you can see, it creates kind of a dissolving effect. And at this point around 6, 7, 8, it looks like blood. So let's just first create a float property to control the power. We can call it the blood dissolve power. We can rename the reference, add an underscore, and set the default value to something like 7 again, and connect it to the power node. We don't want this to be a square, so we can create a mask for this. I'm going to show you a little trick. What we can do is use a polar coordinates node, which is a UV node. But if you split this, and then connect the R to a power node, what we get is this nice little circle which is literally a mask that we can use if we multiply it with the power node. As you can see now, we have a stain of blood, more or less. Replace the connection to the color and if we save this and go test it out in VFX graph, as you can see, we have the black still going on. It's very simple to remove. I'm going to push this alpha down here, which takes care of the transparency, by the way. And I'm going to create an erosion float, a property. Let me just rename the reference, add an underscore. It's going to be a slider between 0 and 1, and we can connect it to the alpha. As it is now, if we save this and test it VFX graph, it only takes care of the transparency, but we don't want that. We want to erode the blood. So if we go back to shader graph, what we can do instead is use the alpha clip threshold. The only thing we need to feed it is the node before the color, connected to a one minus, and connected to the alpha clip threshold. As soon as you save it, as you can see, we have only the blood part. And with this, we can customize a lot the blood. At this moment, what we need is randomness. So we are going to play with erosion in a moment. For now, let's create a random number between two and four for the scale, for example, the blood scale. So it's always random between those values, but it's still kind of similar. So instead, if you go back to shader graph, 
What if we could change the gradient noise without changing the scale? Well, we got the tiling and offset node connected to the gradient noise. If we play with offset, as you can see, we are scrolling the texture and we can pick another part of the noise. Since it's procedural, we always have a different pattern. So let's create a vector tool for that and call it blood offset. Rename the reference and connect it to the offset. Just like this and save this shader. Now in VFX graph, this allows us to, if we open the blood offset, we only need to add a random number for the X, something between 0 and 2. And this will add a lot of randomness. You can increase the maximum even more if you want. But as you can see, it's a lot more random. And if I zoom out, <laughs> it's still very small. But that's very simple to solve. We simply need a set size before the set size of our life. In this pack, we can make it random, uniform, between 0 0.6 and 1. It doesn't change because set size over life is overwriting any previous value, so in the inspector we can say it's multiply in the composition, as usual. A very common change that we need to do. And for the curve of the size over life, we can use something like this that goes from 1 to 0. From big to small. It's nice and all, but what if we could stretch this and align it to its velocity vector? Well, we can with the set scale, for example 0 0.5 in the x and 2 in the y, it's stretched. Now we just need in the orient block to say it's aligned with the velocity vector, a long velocity in this case. And look at this. Now that's an improvement. Now let's take care of the splash on the ground. Every time a drop of blood hits the ground, let's create a splash. As you can see, as it is now, it goes below the ground. And let me tell you that in VFX graph, collisions are not that great. We can make something simple in a flat ground. But other than that, for now, it's kinda hard. Still, in the update particle, let's search for collision or collide and use a collide with a A box. We got this L. You can use it in local, it will always follow the blood. Or you can use it in world space and it will stay in that position in the world in the scene. I'm going to use in world position and say that box is 50 in the X and Z and 0 0.1 in the Y. And as soon as we do it, the blood kind of bounces off this box. In our case, it's not useful because we want the drop of blood to hit the ground and disappear and spawn a splash. So we got this lifetime loss if we increase it to 1. The blood will immediately die as soon as it hits this box. That's useful because now we can trigger on die. Basically, every time the particle dies, it will trigger an event. In this case, the splash on the ground. And there's a very simple trick that we can do if we hit spacebar out here in the system. We got these simple heads and sparks that we can start with. It will make our life easier. We can remove this left part. We just want this part right here and connect the trigger event on die to the GPU event. And from there we get some blue particles and instead of rearranging the output particle quad again, we can simply copy this one from the blood, copy all of this. We actually don't need the color of a life down here, you can delete it. So copy this, control C and then control V, remove this one, control V, connect it and we got blood. <laughs> It still continues because up here we are inheriting the source velocity, 70%. We don't need this, remove it. We also don't need add position. And they keep on moving because we got a turbulence in the update particle we don't need. They disappear because they are aligning with their velocity. Since they don't have velocity, they are not rendered. So we can delete the orient block. And now they are vertical. Like I said, this is a great technique for a flat ground. What we can do now is use a set angle in the initialized particle with 90 degrees in the X. Great! Yeah, they are stretched because down here we are using a set scale, we can remove it. And for the size of our life to curve, we want this flat one. And right in the beginning, we want to add another key with right click and push the first one to around 0 0.5 and then make it flat the second key like this with the handles. So it grows a little bit in the beginning. Just a tiny bit. Great, look at this. It's already looking great, but there's room for improvements. For example, let's make them smaller. 0 0.2, 0 0.5. That's cool. And as you can see, if you look closely, they disappear out of nowhere. Because we are not using the erosion. 
So let's use it. The way we can do it is animate this value with a curve. How do we do it? Well, we sample a curve. For the curve, we want this to go from 1 to 0. If you connect it to the erosion, nothing happens because this needs time. Something that goes from 0 to 1. And we got something. We got the age over lifetime of the particle. Let me just decrease a little bit the curve below 1 so we don't see all of that black around the blood. So like I said, we can use age over lifetime, which goes from 0 to 1. 0, the particle is just born and one the particle diet. As you can see, it's eroding. Now it's all a matter of adjusting values, for example in the blood scale, we can make it small like 1 and 4 or 2 and 6. We can also increase the set size. You can adjust the blood dissolved power, for example, and also create a random number if you want for it. But as you can see, we got pretty much the blood done. Now it's all a matter of you adjusting values and playing a little bit with these until it fits your needs. For example, we can create a prefab out of this. Simply drag and drop to a folder and then create a different version, a burst. Let me disable the loop one and in this burst one, we can disable the loop, increase the rate for example to 64. Say the Z is 20, so it goes further, the Y is 0 0.8, so it goes a little bit up, and 0 0.6, so it spreads a little bit more. And if we try this out, you get this chunk of blood coming out of the burst. Maybe 15 for the Z, and less particles like 20. Yeah, that looks pretty interesting, already. like I said, it's a matter of adjusting values. But that's pretty much it, that's how I created those effects in the beginning. I even then make a few more variations to show you guys how much we can do with this technique and to my patrons, which they support me and they deserve something extra. All of these files are available there, I'll have the link in the description to my Patreon page. A big thank you to every supporter that supports me every month or just one month. Anyway, I'm thankful for your support and as usual, a quick shout out to the top tier patrons, which are Al, Elak Frost, Alex Berg Jones, Ari Koftikian, Bradford Arendt, Brandon, David Crew, David Mydlars, Derek Benson, Diana Simonian, Donald Thompson, Edward Chai, Game Go Go Joe, Goblin Plague, Jeremy Martin, Josh McCormick, Jules Klein, Lianus, Maxim, Madav Gupta, Michael Tello, Mo Graf Tech, Nat Sims, Oitsk, Ovi Sands, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, Swanny, Triadian, Tyler Fritz, Unknown Enigma, Verisuta, One We Do, Willy Clausen, YY, Zara Redding, and In Good Das. Thank you for your support, guys. These videos are possible thanks to you. Really appreciate the effort. And thank you to everyone who watched this video. I hope you have enjoyed, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.